What's up guys, today we're looking at more openings that are named after animals, but these are different than the previous ones because these are actually better. They have high win rates and there are a lot of very tricky traps that you can play. I'm gonna be showing you all of those. Let's jump right in. All right, so first on our list is what's known as the giraffe attack. So this comes out of the Vienna game. So E4, E5, Knight C3 is the Vienna game. And if black plays Bishop C5, which is the third most common move, most people will develop a knight first. But if they play Bishop C5, you have the opportunity now to play the giraffe attack. And what you're going to do is play queen to G4 immediately attacking the weak g7 pawn okay so here we are giraffe attack what is black's most likely response well it's not that easy for them to figure out how to defend this pawn bishop to f8 obviously will defend it but that seems like a really absurd move to just come right back from where you started right uh, of course you can play something like knight f6 and gambit the pawn but that's very risky especially if black is unprepared to go down that route and so what the vast majority of players decide to do is play the logical queen to f6. It brings the queen out, it threatens this almost checkmate move, and it defends their pawn. Now at this point is where we can set the trap. And I say set the trap, really all we're going to be doing is playing this natural looking developing move, knight to f3. We're stopping the queen from getting to f2. And now I want you to put yourself in black shoes for a second. What do you think black would like to play? Well, of course, a move like d6 looks pretty obvious, but they can't do that because the bishop on c8 is hanging. We'll simply take that. Next move, we're going to take this, and then we're going to take the rook, and black's already in a losing position. So they probably are going to try to develop one of their knights. Well, the normal developing square for this knight is obviously taken by the queen. So some people try knight h6, and most people try knight to c6. Well, it turns out that both of these moves, knight c6 and knight h6, are losing on the spot for black. So let me show you what happens. First of all, we'll start with knight to h6. So they're trying to castle. They're you know doing it with tempo on your queen. We're going to simply drop the queen back to g3, and we're creating this attack on the e5 pawn. Now, you might say, well, can't black easily defend that with d6? Well, yes, they can. And now is where we deliver the killing blow. We play knight to d5. We're attacking the queen. We're threatening this very nasty fork, which is going to win us a rook. And also, the only way that black can really prevent that is to go queen to d8 to defend the pawn. But when they do that, they leave this pawn undefended. And now we take here with a fork on these pieces. And black can't save both of them. You know, they can do something like rook g8, but we're just going to take their knight. And black's position is completely a mess. Not only did we win the knight, we also have this guy ready to come in and fork these pieces. There's pawns hanging black's undeveloped it's an absolute mess and they're basically already in a losing position plus nine according to stockfish so knight h6 very bad move you can see why now let's go ahead and talk about knight to c6 and if you'd like to pause and think through this one what do you think we should play in this position well, hopefully you got the hint from last time and you said knight to d5 it's funny because the same exact idea is causing a problem for black again we're attacking the queen we're threatening the fork and of course if they go back to try to defend both of those we're simply taking on g7 and guess what the rook is trapped and we're taking the rook and this actually brings me to an important point one of the principles in chess when you're first kind of learning chess you'll you might hear this is develop your knights before your bishops if we go all the way back to the beginning of this game what did black do on move two they broke the principle and they developed their bishop before their knight, right? And this giraffe variation or this giraffe attack, I should say, takes advantage of that. And this threat on g7 is really what causes black most of their problems. And yes, they can defend it temporarily, but after we deal with this threat, we are threatening knight d5 and black is already in big, big trouble. And by the way, if you're wondering, the only move that black can really play here is knight to e7 because it prevents the knight d5 threat. That's how black can equalize the game. So if they play this, you're just playing an equal position and the game goes on. But like I said, most people don't realize that and the moves that you will see most often will be knight c6 and knight h6. So from this position right here, after you get knight f3 and white has a 67% win rate. All right, now the next trap that I wanna show you actually has a specific name and it's called the Noah's Ark Trap. Now this trap shows up in different openings, but there's a very specific version of it out of the Rui Lopez, which is very common and it's very tricky 
uh, unless white has seen it before and they they know it's coming so let me show you this one e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop to b5 this is the Rui lopez and we're going to follow the main line here and play a6 and most people will go back to a4 if they know any kind of theory they can accept this but it's really not good it just equalizes for black right away of course if they take this pawn you have queen to d4 forks the the knight and the pawn you're going to get your pawn right back with some advantage uh, just because you you know you have check white has to play this you can trade they don't have castling rights you've got the bishop pair which is coming out you're going to castle your rooks involved very pleasant position for black okay most people know that and most people will play bishop to a4 and now we're going to play the move d6 now the most common line is knight f6 and a lot of times d6 happens later and if your opponents aren't paying attention they might not realize what you're trying to do but when you play d6 a lot of people think that it's a good idea to play d4 because it looks like there's a pin here why not play d4 threaten d5 and of course if we take they can take back with the knight right it makes a lot of sense so d4 here's what we're going to do we're going to play the move b5 to break that pin and force the bishop back and now we're going to capture here with our knight and the reason we're capturing with the knight is because we're putting pressure on this bishop and if we can trade off this knight for this strong bishop a lot of times this light squared bishop in the the Rui lopez is, is very annoying for black and so this would be a nice trade for us so white doesn't want to let that happen now they could go to d5 but then we have c6 just forcing it back anyway and then we can trade it next move so what most people will do is simply take your knight because of course if you take back they've got queen takes d4 but once they play queen takes d4 they've already fallen for our trap and we are in a completely winning position so if you want to pause the video and think through what's the winning idea here for black if you had a chance to look at that the move is c5 which attacks white's queen with tempo and also sets up to do the noah's ark trap on the next move so for example if white plays queen back we're simply going to go c4 trapping the bishop this is the famous noah's ark trap that i was mentioning and we're just winning a piece now some of you might have noticed that white could play the move queen to d5 which of course is threatening checkmate and also threatening our rook on a8 so again i'll let you pause the video if you'd like and think through what can we play here as black we have one very strong move in uh, to respond to this queen d5 and if you had a chance to look at that the move is bishop to e6 so we are defending our rook with our queen now because we got the bishop out of the way we're also stopping the checkmate threat of course white doesn't want to take here because they would lose their queen and so we're forcing the queen to move somewhere now there's one more little trick that white has and that's they can go to c6 with check but again if you'd like to pause and think through how do we how should we respond to this if you had a chance to do that the move is bishop to d7 and this is actually again attacking the queen and after it goes back to d5 it's not the same position we were in before because our bishop remember was on c8 now it's on d7 which means our rook is already defended which means now instead of having to deal with two threats we only have to deal with this one threat and we can very easily do that with c4 which is the move we wanted to play anyway it breaks off the battery between the queen and the bishop and traps the bishop we're winning the bishop and we're in a completely winning position so really nice trap there this is the noah's ark trap version in the Rui lopez very sneaky keep that one in mind all right the next opening i'm going to show you is the levin fish attack this is an attack that you can play as white against the sicilian and it's extremely tricky and i'm going to show you why so e4 c5 knight f3 d6 this is the main line sicilian d4 takes takes knight f6 attacking e4 knight c3 defending e4 and now if black plays the move g6 which is very common by the way this is what is called the dragon variation of the sicilian and white has all sorts of ways to respond to this you can play bishop e3 you can play bishop g5 bishop c4 bishop e2 f3 f4 the move that i'm going to show you right now is f4 this is what's known as the levin fish variation now this move is very tricky because the most natural looking move for black you know if you just play g6 what's the most natural move well you're going to put the bishop on g7 right fian kettle the bishop if they play that they're already in a very dangerous position okay and here's what we're going to do we're going to play the move e5 immediately asking this knight the question of okay where's it going to go now most people will trade the pawns and then they have to make a decision 
And let's just kind of talk through some of the most common responses. So the top played move here is knight to g4. And now what we can do is play the move bishop to b5 check. And the problem that black has is the normal way that you would kind of want to respond to this is to block with one of these pieces, right? Like maybe bishop d7 or knight d7. But if you do that, guess what? This bishop is pinned to the king now, and it's no longer defending the knight, which means we can simply take the knight with our queen, and we just got a free knight, okay? So that's really nice. And the same thing happens if they play knight to d7. We simply take it over here, and of course, the uh, well, the knight's just blocking the bishop. So it's, again, a free piece, right? So what does that mean? Well, black either has to play king f8, which is really, really bad, and I'll show you that in just a second, or they can play knight to c6, which is also not awesome. We're going to take it with our knight. Yes, they can throw in this trade, but look what's happening. If they take us back, we've got this fork. We're winning the rook. There's a little trick they can use to kind of save the game, I guess you could say, but it's still leads us to a pretty nice position. So after bishop d7, the game goes on. It gets a little bit complicated, but it's better for white. And um, yeah, so let me go back to this position. A lot of people actually want to avoid that. They realize that these problems, and so they play the move king to f8. And now we have an absolutely stunning move as white. If you'd like to pause the video and think through this, feel free to do so. If you had a chance to do that, the move is knight to e6 check. What are we doing? We're forking the king and the queen. Of course, two different pieces can take our knight, but we're also creating this discovered attack with our queen. And so if black does take our knight, guess what? That's checkmate. Amazing, amazing stuff, right? This is a really cool line. So that is one of the main reasons why this opening is so dangerous, okay? So let's go back. Of course, they don't have to play knight g4. That is the most commonly played move. The next common one is knight to d5. Now, this is also a pretty bad move for black. And again, we can play bishop to b5 check to take advantage of it. And again, you see the same problem. If either of these pieces goes here to block our bishop, guess what? The knight's undefended and we can simply take it and win a piece. Okay, so what does that mean? It means black has to play either knight to c6 or again, king to f8. And most people play king to f8. And now we can simply castle. And black can't castle. Their rook is kind of stuck in an awkward position. We've got this really nice half open f file. We've got three pieces developed. This is just fantastic. And if they take here, uh, they actually lose again to the same exact trap as before. Knight to e6 check, forking these guys, setting up the attack on the queen. Black is lost. There's nothing that they can do. It's mate in a couple of moves. And so that's knight to d5. Let's see what else has been played here. Knight f to d7. This is probably black's best move. It's the third most played move. And if they play this, then white just has a slight advantage. You could play the move e6. Nice little pawn sacrifice here. Now, if they take it, that's really good for us. Knight takes e6. Look at this. It's really nasty. Black has to give up the bishop. And this is not what you want uh, as black. And if they don't take the pawn and play something like knight to e5, which is their best move, we can simply take here on f7. The knight takes it. The game's going to go on. Bishop to e3. It's it's pretty equal. Black's going to castle. We're going to develop and castle. And, and like I said, the game goes on. But there's lots of people who are going to fall for the knight g4 and knight d5 traps. This is the Levin fish variation in Sicilian. Don't forget this one. All right, next up, we have the wasp variation, which I have mentioned on numerous occasions on this channel. But it's out of the elephant gambit. So this is the elephant gambit. We play it as black against e4, knight f3. And if they accept the e5 pawn with the knight, we're going to take here. And then most people will play bishop to c4, creating this attack on f7. And now we have the option to play the wasp variation with queen to g5. And very, very tricky line. It's a 60% win rate for black. And mostly that has to do with the fact that most players are going to take here with their knight, which is immediately losing. Okay, the only way that they can stay in the game is if they take with the bishop or if they play the move d4. But if they take with the knight, we're going to simply take on g2, attacking the rook. They're going to come over. This is probably what they calculated. And then they probably thought to themselves, okay, the knight is still going to be trapping the rook. I'm fine. Everything is defended. But here's where we have the surprise move. Bishop to g4, which actually is trapping white's queen. The only way they can save their queen is to play bishop to e2, which is not what they want to play because the bishop was guarding the knight on f7. So we can simply trade the bishop, 
and take the knight for free. Yes, our king is a little bit exposed, but white's king is not really that safe either. And we just have an extra piece. We're just up a piece. Uh, Stockfish says minus 4.5 for black. It's a great, great trick. So just, and if you're just wondering, you know, if they played a better move like bishop takes f7, the game goes on. We can play something like king e7 and they're probably going to play d4. We can still take on g2. It's still pretty tricky. This is better for white, but slightly better and i i've still had good results playing this as black from this position so wasp variation one of my favorites comes out of the elephant gambit don't forget about this one all right the next trap comes out of the pterodactyl variation of the modern so here we go e4 g6 is the modern where you just immediately fee and kettle the bishop uh so d4 bishop g7 uh let's go knight c3 this is one of the main lines c5 Knight to f3, another one of the main lines. And now we can play this tricky move, queen to a5. This is the pterodactyl variation. And white has several ways that they can respond. They can capture, they can play bishop e3 or bishop d2. Uh, but a lot of people play bishop to c4. And this is actually a terrible blunder. And if you'd like to pause and think through, how can we make white pay for this bad move? Well, if you had a chance to look through that and you found the move C takes D4, congratulations. The idea is that, of course, we're attacking the knight, which is pinned. So white has to recapture, otherwise they're losing the knight. But after they do, we play the move queen to C5, which is a very simple fork on these two pieces. We're attacking the knight twice now, even though it's only defended once. And we're attacking the bishop, which is not defended at all. And white has no moves that can save both of them. So they can you know, defend the knight and we take the bishop. They can move the bishop somewhere, even sacrifice it if they want. That's fine, but we're going to get the bishop. It doesn't really matter what they do. We're winning a piece just like that. All right, and last up, we have the Kingfisher Gambit. So this is a gambit that you can play against the Dutch. So it goes d4, f5, knight c3. You're kind of threatening to play e4. And if black says, nope, I don't think I want to let white play e4 because that can be a very annoying move uh, against the Dutch. They might play the move d5 thinking that they've stopped you from playing e4. Well, guess what? Kingfisher game, but you're going to play e4 anyway. And actually, regardless of which way black takes this pawn, there's going to be traps and tricks that they have to watch out for. So let's go ahead and start with uh, the most commonly played D takes E4. So what are we going to play here? Well, we can play the move bishop to G5. Now, a lot of players, when they see this bishop here on G5, they don't like it. They want to kick it away. And the second most common move played here is H6 to do just that. And we actually have a really nice move here if you'd like to pause and think through what it is. Well, if you had a chance to do that, the move is queen to h5 check. See, the problem with h6 is that now black can't respond g6. Like if their pawn was back here, they could have played g6 to block our queen. They can't now because we just take it, which means they have to move their king to d7. And well, I hope you can see why black's position is falling apart now, right? That's not where you want your king. You can't castle. You've blocked your bishop. You've blocked your queen. It's basically game over from that one move. By the way, this is not even a threat anymore because our queen is attacking the rook. So we can just simply develop a piece like bishop to c4, getting more pressure on these weak light squares and black's position is already lost. Okay, so that's one little trick to keep in mind there. And if we go back to the starting position, of course, they don't have to take with the D pawn. They could take with the F pawn, but this is actually even worse than capturing with the D pawn. And now we can play the queen H5 check move immediately. And yes, there's G6, which is what everybody plays because they don't want to move their king. But now we have a nice follow up. We simply take the pawn here on D5. You might say that's great. Okay, we're winning a pawn, but it's actually more than that because most people with black here decide, you know what? I think I just need to trade, get this queen out of here so that I can continue my development. And now they realize, wait a second, how am I going to deal with this threat over here, right? Because that's a fork. The normal move to kind of defend that would be knight a6, but guess what? We'll just take that knight, and then we still can play knight takes c7, right? So they can't do that. So what do they have to do instead? Well, they have to move their king over, king to d8 to defend it. But now we have a really nice follow-up. So if you want to pause and think through, what can we play here? Well, if you had a chance to do that, the move is the simple bishop to f4. It looks like a very simple position with not much going on, but after bishop f4, how again, black has the same problem. How are they going to defend this? Because we're just going to take with our knight and then take the rook, right? And so most people decide, okay, I guess I need to develop this knight. And we just do the same thing. We take it. We take here with the knight, attacking the rook. Now it's not trapped, 
But after it moves, we have one sort of final tactic to kind of finish off this trap. If you want to pause and think through that. But if you had a chance to do that and you said knight to e6, you are correct. It's a discovered attack on the rook. It's also check here. So after takes, we simply take the rook. And we're going into an end game, up the exchange, uh, up some pawns, I think. Black has bad pawn shark. I mean, it's it's just winning for white. So really nice little trick there. And so going all the way back, you can see how both of these moves, black has to be very careful. There's traps and tricks that they can fall into. This is the Kingfisher Gambit. It has a 53% win rate, which is very nice as white. Hope you guys enjoyed these traps. I had a lot of fun putting this video together and let me know if you were able to use some of these in your games and get some, some nice quick wins. As always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.